Hi, this is Mr. McGovern, and welcome back to the fifth video on simple harmonic motion. And this video is called Simple Harmonic Motion as Waves. This is going to be the first of two videos. The second video, which is video six in the series, will be the follow-up. I just want to break it in two because it's quite a lot of information. So first of all, we're going to talk about what the problem is with simple harmonic motion, and then why we deal with it as a wave. And then two important properties are going to help us with calculations, um, amplitude and omega. So you'll recall from two videos ago when I drew the forces on a spring as it's going through its bounce. So these are the different points of its, of its bounciness. Um, the total forces always point towards the middle and they get bigger the further away the mass is from the equilibrium point. And so you can sum that up as the, the force or well, the total force changes size and it changes direction. Now that for us is a pretty complex topic. Up until now, we might have had um, forces change in direction, things going in circular motion, going around a circle, but they're always the same size. So this is a situation where we're dealing with a changing force, um, and it's a very complicated situation. So we need a new set of tools to be able to deal with this. And there are a couple of sets of tools. Um, one's called a reference circle, and I might make an extra sort of bonus video at the end of the simple harmonic motion about this thing called the reference circle. But the tool I like is modeling a simple harmonic motion as a wave. So here we have a pendulum swinging back and forth, and underneath that you can see the shadow of the pendulum. And under the shadow, as you can imagine, a piece of paper that's moving along. And that shadow traces out the red pattern of the wave. So the projection of something that follows simple harmonic motion follows a wave pattern. That is, the shadow follows a wave pattern. And the good news is we have well-established tools for dealing with waves. And because this follows a wave pattern, we can use those tools to deal with simple harmonic motion. So I'm just going to introduce two important properties that we need to know to be able to do this um, dealing with it as a wave. The first one is called amplitude. Now amplitude is, you can see on the diagram on the right, it's the distance from the maximum displacement, one edge of the wave, or how far the pendulum swings, to the equilibrium point. It's not the full back and forth distance, it's just from the middle equilibrium point to one of that maximum displacement. And the second excuse me, quality we want to look at is the rotational frequency. Now, we've looked at that in rotational motion before. It was where uh, the symbol is um, omega. Uh, it's measured in radians per second, and the reason we came about it was we wanted to turn our normal frequency basically into something with radians. And the same thing happens here. So we, same formula, can take frequency and multiply by 2 pi, and gives us the um, rotational frequency, or the radians per second. And if you're given time period, there's a relationship between time period and frequency, which is 1 over t equals frequency. And so I can rearrange that first formula for rotational frequency and get rotational frequency as 2 pi over the time period. So two bits of information that we need to even start this, amplitude and rotational frequency. So in the next video, we'll go through the whole toolkit and how we use it.